Welcome to another video with Mr. Long Teach Tips. And in this video, we're going to have a conversation about how teachers can use the new artificial intelligence chat GPT. So first of all, chat GPT is an artificial intelligence in the form of a chat bot designed to generate human like text based on the input it receives. Essentially, it's like having an extremely knowledgeable and well-spoken digital assistant that can answer questions, write articles, or even have conversations with you. AI involves teaching computers to understand and solve problems, make decisions, and even perform tasks that would typically require human intelligence. Basically, AI refers to making computers smart and able to do things that normally only humans can do. People tend to think of AI as something new, but if you've played a computer game against a computer or seen items recommended to you on your online shopping apps, then you've already experienced AI, but it has recently come under the spotlight with newer technologies like the drawing AI websites and ChatGPT. Some people will be excited by these new technologies, while others will be concerned. So we need to understand how people respond to the new technology. Any technology that is created or exists before you are 15 is considered normal and a part of everyday life. Technology that enters your life between the ages of 15 and 35 is often seen as innovative and revolutionary to your life, while technology that is created after you are 35 tends to create uncertainty and possibly fear. The age ranges are not exact and this is a major generalization and while not everyone fits into this model, it does stand true for many people whether it was the invention of the printing press, the automobile, the television, internet or the cell phone. And the same will apply to AR. And so we cannot uninvent new technologies. And with information so freely available, we cannot be the gatekeepers to this knowledge and hope students don't learn about it. But rather, we need to find ways to teach students how to use it wisely and ethically. It is widely considered that AI is best used as a supplement to human capabilities rather than a replacement for them. You could walk to the shop, but we use vehicles to help us do it better and give us more options. You know how to add up numbers manually, but you use a calculator or spreadsheet to do what you can already do, but faster and more efficient. The technology isn't replacing the task because the task isn't the walking or adding up numbers. The actual task is to get items from the shop or calculate a class average. So the technology is a tool to supplement what we already can do in a way that helps us achieve a bigger task. So we should not be using AI to do all the work for you, but to use it to supplement what you can already do by using AI to support, enhance or automate existing processes rather than replace them entirely. Before we start using AI, first start with a clear understanding of the problem you want to solve or task you want to complete. This will help you clearly define what prompts you will give the AI as this is a skill in itself in order to get the most from AI. You then use the prompts to create an example or list of ideas to work from or a skeleton or framework of all the content. Once you have your framework, you can then check that the content is correct. Use AI to generate new insights and recommendations, but always make sure to validate these results with human judgment. And then refine and edit content that is not appropriate for what you have in mind. And then add and build to the existing framework the rest of the content that you can create yourself. Continue this process until you have completed the task according to your goal. By following this process, not only will you get the most from AIs like ChatGPT, but also talk about your process to your students so they can learn best practices when using AI. By following this process, not only will you get the most from AIs like ChatGPT, but also talk about your process to students so they can learn best practices when using AI. So let's have a look at some examples for how teachers can use ChatGPT. So you can go to chat.openai.com slash chat to access ChatGPT. You'll have to register. At the moment, it is free, but you can upgrade to the Plus version. It might not always be available because of high demand, but when it is available, you can use it. But just take note of the limitations. Obviously, not all the information is correct. Could be biased because it's based on a data set of large amounts of data. And this data is limited to any event before 2021. What I use ChatGPT is to create a framework or skeleton and I work from there. How many times are you wanting to do a task and it would really help if you just had an example. So let's start with our first prompt. So your administrators come to you and ask you to create a subject improvement plan for history for a student that is failing. And you want to give some ideas of what you can specify and ideas of how you can lay out the subject improvement plan. So here is my prompt. I've asked for a subject improvement plan for history. I've mentioned all the details specifically as students failing subjects. I've mentioned strategies for the teacher as well as recommendations for parents. And I also specified how I want it laid out with paragraph headings. So let's see what the response is going to be. 
So as you can see, it's busy developing the subject improvement plan. It's laying out. And so it's giving you basically a structure that you can use. Now you might not like all of the content that it generates. So you can always ask it to regenerate the content. But if majority of it is correct and true, then I would suggest that you use it and tweak it for what you exactly need. Adding content that you think is valuable, take out what you feel is not necessary. So there we go, we can regenerate the response if we don't like it, and we can ask for more clarity. For example, we can ask to explain the strategies for the teacher in more detail. So you can give it quite specific instructions like this, and it will take what you've done before and just address those particular issues. So there we go, you can see all this lovely content that it generated for you. So again, take what you like and leave out what you don't like and tweak what is close to what you want. I'm going to continue here with more prompts, but if you wanted to separate your content into different categories or different chats, then you can obviously just select new chat. So I'm going to pretend that we are setting a test and I'm thinking I need five topics for English creative writing for a letter with some options about a formal letter and maybe an informal letter. So let's see what it gives me here. And so there you go, you get some nice little ideas that you can use for your exam papers. Maybe you're struggling to be creative and you just need some help. So yeah, you can tweak the ones that are close, take the ones you do like and modify that as you see fit. Let's look at some essay topics for events from World War I. And so create some really good ideas here. I've seen teachers take, for example, ideas and ask ChatGPT to create the first part of the essay and get students to write the rest. This is a very useful skill in getting students to take content and add on to it and adapt it, which is a useful skill when using AI. So let's try that quickly. So I'm going to say write the first introduction paragraph for an essay topic and I'm going to copy the one that I like. So I'm going to copy that one and paste it and let's see what it comes up with. So now it's creating the first paragraph for the essay. Now we can use this as part of a lesson where we give this to students and ask them to continue with the essay or to critique the paragraph for them to gain the skill of being able to find what information is accurate and what's incorrect and needs correcting. What could be really nice is that you actually do the first paragraph for all five topics and give different students different essays to create or edit. So I've got a piece of text that I want to get some questions from. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to give me 10 comprehension questions on the following text. And I'm going to paste them at the end of this. So there you can see all of this text. It's about propaganda in World War One. I. I just copied it from a website. I'm going to press enter. And so there you can see your 10 questions from that text. Maybe you want more questions. Maybe you don't want them all. But now you've got a nice comprehension. Now what if you want the memo, we can actually copy these. So I'm asking you to give the answers to the following questions based on the text above. And I'm going to paste in the questions over here. I'm just put in the numbers quickly. So they're all the numbering. So let's see what it does. And so now you basically are getting your memo. So you can tweak it as you see fit. But there are your questions. And now you're creating the memo part of your exam or test. And there we go. That can be really useful when you're trying to set exams and getting content for that. We can also use it to create, for example, a lesson plan. So I'm going to ask it to create a lesson plan with an informal assessment for a lesson about solving trinomials. If you can be as specific as possible, that will help ChatGPT to give you exactly what you're looking for. So mention criteria, things that you want, mention the levels that you want, and that should help give you what you are looking for. So there we've got a nice little assessment, we've got the closure, we've got even the time frame for how we want to do each task. So we can refine this even more. So I'm going to ask it to recreate the lesson plan from above, but I want it in a table format where the time slots are for each row. So let's see what it does. And so now it's putting that exact lesson plan in a table format. And it's already told me what activity it is, what materials are needed, and what the assessment is. And so this can be really useful for your administration. But I really need some examples for my trinomials. And so I'm going to ask it for 10 examples of trinomials. And I want them to indicate the level of difficulty for factorizing for an easy, medium, or hard. So I can see what the levels are for each of the examples. And so here are the examples that I can use in class to demonstrate to the students as well as give to them for homework. Now let's say I want to create a worksheet. So I'm going to make a worksheet on noble gases. So I'm going to ask it to create a table listing the noble gases in the periodic table and the different attributes of the gases. So there's a nice little table. I want that table, but I actually want some more data in it. So I'm going to ask it to include a column for the application of where the gas is used in everyday life. 
And so it will give me an updated table now with this example application column on the right hand side. And so I can then use this in a worksheet or a note that I want to give to the students as a nice summary. So there we go. In my worksheet, I want to add facts about noble gases. So I'm going to ask it for five facts that students should know about it. And so these would be nice little blocks that you put in your note on the side as extra information just to round off your worksheet. Again, you need to double check that the data is correct before using it and always check that that data lines up with what you know. You don't want to be copying information that has errors in it. And what happens if we can do a little practical in class to test for noble gases? So I'm going to ask you to create a plan for how we can test one of the noble gases. And so it's giving me the layout of an experiment that we could do. And so together with all this information, I could create a really nice worksheet. Just another piece of advice, when you are copying data from ChatGPT, so if, for example, we're going to copy all this data, you select the data and you can copy it. And then when you are in Word, if you paste the data directly, you'll notice that it copies it in a weird format because you're copying it from a website. So what I would suggest that you do is when you paste it, you actually paste it as plain text. And that way you, you don't get the table formatting and you can lay it out the way you want. Especially when you're copying tables. Let's copy this table. Let's copy all the information. And now when you paste that information, we're going to paste it as plain text only. But I really want it in a table still. So once it's got it in plain text, I'm going to then select that data. Come here to insert. I'm going to select table and convert text to table. And our data is separated by tabs. So we want to make sure tabs selected and it will be five columns and seven rows. I think that'll be correct. And there we go. Our data is now in that table and we can adjust it as we see fit for our worksheet. So some really powerful things that ChatGPT can do. And now it is up to you as a teacher to be creative in how you will use that content in your classes, whether it's just creating worksheets or to help you with tests or to actually add value to your lessons, like the idea of getting students to write an essay based off of a paragraph generated from ChatGPT or using ChatGPT to create content and the students must fact check it to see that it's all correct. I've even seen some teachers where they've used ChatGPT to copy and paste answers from students and get ChatGPT to grade those answers to determine if they're right or wrong. But that's very dependent on the format of your assessments in that you can easily copy and paste it. It's important to note as teachers, ChatGPT and AI are not going away. So we need to be aware of the impact from a teaching perspective. We need to recognize that students may use these technologies if you are sending work to be completed at home or if students have access to devices in the classroom. This may impact how much value you should give the task, especially if it's an assessment. Assessments done in the class on paper or on a limited network will be better reflections of students' ability when assessing them. And we must be open and honest with our students. Let's tell them that we know about the technology, what our expectations are of them with regard to using AI and teach them to use it wisely and ethically. And you can start this by showing them how you are using it personally to benefit their learning. If you want to keep up to date with the latest teacher tips as well as AI that you can use in the classroom, then click on that subscribe button so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.